Hello. Welcome. Welcome, everybody, to the Arto Vitalikos and Tim and Tina. Tina from Monica are today joining us for this in-studio session. Hi, Tina. Hello. How are you, Monica? Hello, Alessandro. Hello. How are you? How are you today? Yeah, good. Just uh, on site for a project, so bear with me with my background, but really excited to be here. And you're always working on exciting projects and you are working everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's good. always time to make a cocktail though. <laughs> oh yeah, we're gonna get into that actually. <laughs> we're all very toasty. And um, and here we have Mr. Penfolds, Tim, who's Johnny oh, yeah. from, from Bristol. You're right. You good, thanks. Yeah, great. How's your studio? Yeah, chilling. Just been out on a job all day on the sun pretty red um so yeah just come back in here to sort some work out and speak to you guys nice. yeah it's good what have you been working on today Tim? um i've been down on the river in bristol painting like a houseboat like a narrow boat so yeah is that it's a been friend cool. or is that a, like a commercial project or it's, yeah it's like a client yeah it's like it's this old couple who bought the boat kind of last year i think i've been renovating it and now it got to the stages where they let me go wild and just chuck there's a colour on it basically. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Perfect perfect time for summer. Well, I know, summer. yeah, it's really hot here as well. So I'm like yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. You know it was also uh perfect for summer, I think, especially because you'd be working all day. A beautiful aperitivo. I think we should keep on some tasting and some drinks. Let's do it. Uh, to get us going and then and then we can just get to know you a little bit better team for cool. listening back home. Sure. It's, um, always right? it's always time of a very table. We Italians, you know, this is the perfect time for us actually. We're, I'm English, so we just drink all the time, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um Ale, so Ale is uh, in house mixologist. We is gonna talk us through the Italico script today, so we can all make one and and then join that. Ale, please. Tim, do you have everything? We've got some bits, yeah. Let me see what I got. I got we got an amazing bottle. Yeah, it's great. Let's turn that down a bit. No, you can call it the oh. of right? My bad, sorry I've disappeared. There we go. I got that. I got the beautiful glass. Yeah. yeah. Glass. Um, and I got a jar of a random jar of olives. Uh, and yes. I took quite a small little bottle of uh, Prosecco. That's all you need. You have everything. Yeah. I don't have any ice, though, because um, I don't have the luxury of a freezer, sadly. Yes, but... Perfect spritz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shall we start? Sure. So, so let's start with the first ingredients. The main perfect and great. This? This? I don't want to spill it everywhere. <laughs> Have you really? tried Italicus before, actually? No, I haven't. Actually. That's the first time you open it. Wow. It's really okay. nice. Right. What can you smell? It? Um, booze. <laughs> 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 What? So, um, I can't put yes. my finger. What is it? Is it kind of like lemony or? Yeah, it's bergamot. So if you go that close to the nose, you get a lot of like alcohol that comes through first. If you keep it a little bit far, like you're smelling a perfume bottle, yeah, yeah, yeah. you actually get a scent of bergamot. It's beautiful. It's yeah, really nice. Isn't the nice. bottle beautiful? The bottle is just like absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I was attracted to the bottle straight away. It's kind of one yeah. for the shelf, you know? It's so gorgeous. Yeah. We say in the team, it's a piece of art. It is, yeah. yeah. Was, isn't that's, it? that's why art lends itself so well to the bottle, you know? Yeah, didn't Giuseppe say it's inspired by a Roman co column, like the traditional yeah. Roman column? Yeah, it's absolutely. Totally see that. Totally yeah, see that. and the color is the yeah, Amalfi Coast, right? Which right, is just, yeah. yeah. Just water, yeah. It is a column, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so the, the idea behind the branding, so the founder is called Giuseppe Gallo, uh, is a former bartender, brand ambassador, so comes from hospitality and um, drinks trade background. He, um, were, he was inspired uh, by the Italy, the made in Italy from, you know, an Italian bartenders living and working outside your country. What, what you always miss the most is home 
and um, thinking about an, um, a really kind of uh, traditional recipe of rosolio, which is what Italicus is, uh, made actually from, from his grandparents. He came up with the idea of recreating their recipe, but for the modern palate, so he did a lot of research in uh, the Italian liqueur and aperitivo drinking occasions, and then he found this very old recipe of rosolio that he brought back to life adding that kind of modern flavor of bergamot, uh, which is what you smell um, yeah. when, you, when you actually smell the bottle. Jeez. And then now that we're gonna drink it as a spritz, you see how those really nice citrus notes are actually gonna come on top. Cool. And, uh, and that's the first tasting note that you get. So now that you have that kind of mouth watering, <laughs> um, fitting in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Shall we start with the general portion? We said it. We start with a general portion. So we, we say one part, but be generous. So one part you'd say is like, how many fingers worth in a glass would you say? I don't, <laughs> well, I don't have like a measuring jug, but I've got- it Depends if you do two finger like this. I've got, an old, I've got an old spray can and I can use the, um, I can't get off. <laughs> can you, I can use the top there. Is that, good? Is that a good measuring jug? <laughs> that's, that's not even enough. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> I think he needs like four of those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Out there. Maybe, okay, maybe I'll two. I'll just free pour, I'll just free pour. <laughs> Go freestyle. So, so two, two, team, two fingers, but just stay like this, yeah? <laughs> the knuckle, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, that's about right. Yeah. Does that look yeah. right, Sandro? That's about right. I mean, yeah. this, is, this is our size, if you want to compare it. Uh, yeah, I may have got a little bit more of it, so I think you went a little bit down. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, well, I... Let's add some ice. Let me have a quick, yeah, one sec. <laughs> it's Where is it? We can't find ice. Well, it, wasn't, it wasn't already with ice, yeah? We were, we were speaking about yeah. earlier that, like, the next career goal is to be able to have a freezer in your studio. So yeah. I've got like a little fridge, it's got an ice section in it, but there's no ice in there, so <laughs> one day, luxury. One day. Yeah. yeah. So then just mix it with as many as many bubbles as you can. This is where I put a hole in a painting with the core, isn't it? Let's make it fizzy. Oh. Oh. Oh, yes. So let's top it up, yeah? What, well, to like the top or as much as you want? Like... Yeah. The color of the glass actually matches the painting behind you perfectly, Tim. It looks amazing. I mean, turquoise is kind of one of my things, you know, so. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We try to bring them up. Oh, it's very kind of, kind of. Yeah. It's quite nicely. They look good together. Awesome. It gets really wet. Well, it's a beautiful color that you use a lot in your paintings, actually. Yeah, I've always been obsessed with it. Like some of those colors, like some people see green, some people see blue, and I quite like that. Depending on how your perception of color is, a painting looks different to everyone, you know. And I quite like that turquoise is that weird color that floats between two different colors. You know, I like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like the Amalfi Coast. Exactly. Like, yeah. In the yeah. middle. You just want to look at water all day. The Amalfi Coast, just and the water is just like. Turquoise blue with green, it's just magical. <laughs> uh, I've been down at Bristol Harbour where the water's like brown, you know? <laughs> you don't want to swim in that. <laughs> yeah, you need to be dreaming about it. That's yeah. Same. And olives? And yeah. have you got your olives as well? Yeah. I did, yeah. <laughs> Pardon? Just make sure that you got three olives, yeah? Three? Oh. Well, you got nice olives. Mine are like <laughs> maybe a bit cheaper. <laughs> the idea of adding olives to, to a spritz is for the aperitivo ritual of eating and drinking something at the same time. You know, Italians, they do it um, because when they leave work and they just want to enjoy the, the kind of sharing moment with friends just to chill and relax before they go back home to dinner, uh, they need to, to drink but eat something at the same you time. Do. Yeah, that why would you put it in? You can leave it like that. You put it in, you get a saline as well, uh, which is really nice added into the drink. A little bit of saltiness. So it makes it a bit more salty then. Yeah. And exactly. I like saltiness. Yeah, it's good. 
Cheers, guys. It's a good as a go. I wish I had the ice. I'd be that much nicer. Cheers. Ahead of you guys. What did you say? Was cheers in Italian? Salute. 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 Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Salute. <laughs> of course, yeah. Mmm. <laughs> oh, it's really good. It's very yummy. Definitely. So nice. So what are the options you were saying about like soda and grapefruit? Was like another one we said. Yeah, so that was the other one. So because you have these really nice citrus notes in Italicus, if you mix it with soda, then you enhance even more the citrus notes and you right. take really the liquid uh, more. If you add a citrus soda, uh, even more, you know, you have the really nice refreshing uh, sip of Italy, we call it. Uh, so it's just like uh, a really amazing drink to have in summer. It's 20% ABV as well. Uh, I was just looking at, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Lovely. Cool. Like so, hot day like today. Perfect. We got you. We got you sorted with a drink now. <laughs> Which yeah, was yeah. very important long day. <laughs> mm, it's awesome. I get to eat the olives as well. How? <laughs> so, um, Tim, tell us a little bit about you know yourself or. The people listening to us, um, I don't know if anyone knows, but Tim um, has worked with us for the second year on the Creative Talent. Last year, supported us creating this amazing abstract um, digital artwork of Italicus bottle that was kind of summer in a painting because you could really see the bottle uh, kind of redesigned, ab abstracted with these lines of summer and the sun coming through, it was amazing. This year you've done something similar, but inspired by Miami. Why Which Miami? Which is perfect for me. Yeah, like Miami has always been a go-to kind of inspiration, you know, for my artwork. Kind of, yeah, pinks, turquoises, the kind of slightly 80s kind of throwback stuff. Um, you know, the idea of cocktails and pool parties and music and, you know, it was perfect. Yeah, linking like your brand with my artwork and Miami. Can't ask for more, you know, it's perfect. It's great. I really like. I really like how you interpreted Miami. Mm. Like, Take a flamingo in there. Yeah, you got yeah, the flamingo, the whole thing. Yeah, it just reminds me of like you know, kind of this abstract view of if you were like, you know, in a drum, in a drum, drum. Of Miami, and that's what you would see. Yeah. Um, below you, you know, just something's really like. It's a, it was a, it's a little bit like, yeah, it reminds me. I know I don't want to say this, but it reminds me a little bit of David Hockney kind of style of things, but it's. It's really nice. So. That pool painting, yeah, with the split in the yeah. scratch. Yeah, fantastic, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, great. So, yeah, um, about me, um, I've lived in Bristol for like, what was it, like eight years now, I think? I'm originally from Cambridge, which is another kind of city kind of on the water. We have the canals and the river and stuff. Um, I lived there for, well, since I was born, I lived in Cambridge, and I used to be a screen printer there whilst doing all the art stuff on the side. And then um, I kind of packed in the printmaking stuff and moved to Bristol to kind of pursue my career as a full-time artist. So yeah, like eight years ago. And um, yeah, I've been here since. Um, and yeah, I just kind of bumble around and make canvases for exhibitions and travel and paint murals and you know do little design bits. Excuse me, I'm kind of burpy after that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah, do you know, do, do little projects with guys like you um yeah and just all sorts really i'm kind of anything that's visual and i can lend my hand to i will do you know so try to be diverse with my uh kind of my surfaces and my uh, approach to what i make yeah where's um this diversity coming from uh there's a lot of your paintings which are amazing really interesting that i see behind i don't know if you can zoom into any of those and maybe i don't even zoom i can move out the way so these are all um these all been made for an exhibition i have in september which is up on like the northwest um just below liverpool at a place called new brighton um and the whole show is kind of based around the work i did based around the kind of cigarette icon stuff and then lots of kind of yeah 80s -y kind of minimal abstract stuff all lots of pinks and turquoises and you know reds and blues and all sorts very pastel -y stuff and um i mean there's not much to kind of like there's not much behind it as far as like theme it's more just like shapes and colors and like lines that i enjoy that i put in my work there's not really like a story behind them so much i try to 
keep my work to being more about just shape and color rather than like theme or kind of like a background story, you know? Um, I guess the cigarette work is the only stuff that has a bit of a background with it. And that's just because I got obsessed with the, the iconic connotation of the cigarette. And I just started making the kind of funky bent up ones. But um, yeah, it's just, it's all just stuff that I try to make funky and exciting, I guess. Yeah. I think it's, I mean, I think you're kind of underselling yourself there, Tim. <laughs> yeah, I'm really good at doing that. I'm really good at doing that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, your work, your work is just like you know, so evolved over you know how long have you been painting? Over 15 years now. Uh, 18. 18 years. Yeah. So you know the the color palette that you've designed, the way that you work, you know how clean your line work is. The composition there's so many elements that, that that's kind of, yeah i mean that's kind of what it is to me is you know it's a balance of color shape and composition yeah and i i don't know what my recipe is or what my rules are i just know that when i make a painting it looks right or it looks wrong you know and you kind of you come up with this kind of vocabulary that is your work and it's quite hard to explain it i think sometimes it's like you know, it's always better for someone else to kind of explain an artist's work because they kind of see it through fresh eyes where artists get so involved and so obsessed with their work that you kind of you kind of don't really think about it in like a a way that's kind of easily kind of yeah well it just becomes an extension of you so it's yeah. like trying to have it's like asking the question of like who are you it's quite a hard thing to answer yeah and, think, and you're instantly gonna put yourself down aren't you you know <laughs> yeah. and it's I think you know, I think that's interesting because a lot of all creatives have that. Even if you ask a cocktail guy, they'd be like, "It's the same ingredients. Yeah, it's color, or you know, it's taste, it's flavor, it's all these, it's these tangible ingredients." With art, it's like it's some, you know, it's composition, it's it's color, mm -hmm. it's emotion. But how do you really explain what you do? That's you gotta you gotta see it or you gotta taste it. You know yeah, I mean? and I mean, I think I've always tried to make my artwork be one of those things that doesn't really need explaining. It. You like you see it on a wall, you look at it. You like it or you don't like it, and it's totally fine to not like it. You know, I, I this stuff I don't like, but it's that instant reaction of like, oh, I like that. I don't know why yet, but I do like it, and that's kind of what I've always gone for in my work is that first initial reaction of just mm -hmm. Ooh, something that's pleasing, you know? Yeah. And what what happens when you don't get that feeling? Do you like? Yeah, I, I can tell straight away, and it just goes straight in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my my success rate is you know better than it used to be. The more I paint, the better I get at it. And you know sometimes you have those months where you just can't seem to get it right, and your head's not in the right space. Um, but yeah, it's just it's hard, you know, with that you can do the same thing over and over again, and you can make you know good painting after good painting, but they're not necessarily exciting because it's you're repeating your formula and you're you're kind of playing safe. And then sometimes you go through those periods where you just try loads of new things and develop and experiment and you know you might mess up hundreds of paintings but in that there might be one that is your next thread that you can lead off and that's really important you know mm. failure yeah. is like so important as a creative yeah because without failure you're always like it's you you know it's not very exciting i think personally for myself yeah. So yes. true. It's, um, such um, work done by heart is um, is amazing. Really listening, listening to you talking about it, and um, you know, you know what we say as well. Um, we did Italicus for us bartenders are artists because they do work in the same way. You know, playing with ingredients and inspiration around them. So it's uh, such an amazing connections between our world, you know, of an alcohol brand and and the artist world. That's what kind of got us starting into this conversation and this beautiful project, uh, the creative talents, just, you know, promoting uh, creativity without limits. Uh, yeah, that's completely. what we want to do. Yeah. Yeah, and I think they all inspire each other as well, you know, like a lot of the times that I get my ideas or come up with concepts is when I'm out with friends having a drink around a table and we're talking and the, the conversation that having a drink with each other kind of makes kind of surface is is really important to my creative process, you know? Like, I'm not saying it's just about alcohol, but it's the it's the social in, mm. social environment that having a drink with a friend yeah. creates, you know, is really important. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And it just keeps gets the ideas flowing and stuff. And it's like, yeah. I think, but I think it's all about, you know, the experience 
like all of it, you know? So when you go to an art gallery, it's the visual experience. When you go to a really nice cocktail bar, it's the, you're not paying, you know, just anything, just to have a drink. You're, you're going into the whole experience, the flavor profiles, the I way it tastes, you know, what the bottle looks like. Like all of those things actually kind of, you know, really matter to enhancing the experience, which yeah. funny enough, it's just all about senses. Just yeah, so it yeah, it is. Yeah, completely. Creativity. So. Yeah, so you know when you go to a bar and they've got really bad music playing and you're like, I can't be here. i got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it's like, I mean, you know, this this is one of those bottles that you walk into a bar and they've got all the, the kind of bottles behind the bar. If I saw that, I'd be like, what is that? Yeah. Like, I want to try that. That looks cool, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, Monica, where did the bottle come from? With Like, can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, sorry. I started actually talking about Rosolio and Giuseppe, and then I stopped there because I was thirsty as well. I couldn't wait to make a drink. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's the end of the day, guys. <laughs> we need that too. Um, so the bottle, the bottle design itself is inspired by the essential made in Italy, we say. Uh, for us, it's really elevate the made in Italy, modern, innovative, creative. So the bottle has been designed with Stranger and Stranger, um, which is one of the most known creative agencies. Uh, they're based in London, but they have an office as well in uh, New York. Uh, and I think one in LA too. Um, Row one who's behind the bottle, then took part last year to this project as well as one of the judges for the creative talent. He, um, he had a very simple brief from Giuseppe create something that when you look at it says made in Italy, like reminds me of home. So he came up with uh, this beautiful bottle shaped as a Roman column. Roman column is the most iconic, uh, probably like uh, Italian recognized symbol that you see everywhere in Europe as well. And then when you look at all the design itself of the cup, uh, on the top of the bottle, there's a Vitruvian man which is redesigned as Bacchus holding bergamots instead of grapes. Oh, yeah, that's pretty really cool. I didn't notice that. Yeah. And if you look properly at the face of the little angel redesigned as Bacchus, there's Giuseppe's second daughter, Gloria. That's really? nice. Yeah. That's really cool. so when, uh, when, Roman, uh, when Rowan came to, to visit Giuseppe back in the days, he used to have a bar down in uh, Chelsea. Uh, on King's Road, um, he went there with them um, with the first brief um, showing the bottle, and and then he came with uh, this little angel face on the, on the Bacchus um, logo, and and Giuseppe wasn't sure about it at first, uh, but he, um, he then was uh, like super happy, and Gloria is very proud of um, of the logo being actually representing her. So now he's working on a second brand uh, for his first daughter, Sophia, <laughs> which uh, will be uh, probably um, a work in progress for, for a little longer. But um, yeah, that's kind of the background behind the bottle. It's crazy. Um, I didn't I didn't realize that the brand was so recurrent and recent. Like from looking at the bottle and stuff, I assume it's like some really old traditional kind of Italian kind of like you know, spirit or brand or whatever. The recipe like. is. Sorry? The recipe is. You know, yeah. the recipe of the cocktail, Monica. Like how, I mean, that's over. Didn't he well, find the recipe in a book from? From the 1800s. So Rosolio, which comes from the Latin Rose Olis. Uh, Rosalis means morning dew. It's that time of the day when uh, monks, but also traditionally family, uh, so usually the women in the house used to go out to harvest the botanicals to make these homemade liqueurs. Um, and that's where Rosalio takes the name from. Um, Rosalio used to be drunk by the uh, King of Savoia back in the 1400s. used to be the first ever um, liqueur aperitivo served as a welcome drink to the guests uh, coming into the house of, um, of the king. And, you know, when you think about back in the days, no internet, no social media, everyone kind of used to drink what was very popular. And was well, the good old favorite. days. <laughs> <laughs> the good old days, yeah. And um, and then with uh, like a few other categories that came in the market and became more popular, Rosalio almost got forgotten. So 
Italico takes pride into being the first rosolio launching in the market to bring back the rosolio category internationally in Oat and uh, and just spreading you know the word of aperitivo the kind of modern innovative aperitivo in uh, and that's what we're focusing on as a brand into everything that we do uh that kind of innovation and creativity behind the brand the liquid the founder uh giuseppe and the team which is always super exciting about every project that we do it's great yeah, I love it. It's so nice to learn more about the brand. Like, obviously, I've worked for you a few times, but I've never really sat down and had a conversation about kind of background and the history of it all and stuff. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's really an interesting story, isn't it? Like how brands develop like that, and also just the history of the drink. And the you know, a, lot, a lot of people just see it as a product that sits on a shelf in a shop that you buy and take home. It's really nice to kind of look into more behind it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It makes it taste good too. Oh, yeah. so much better. I like it even more and more. Every word you say, it. yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's think, very enjoyable. Yeah, it's art though. When you look at a painting, it's like, oh, that's really nice. And then you find out about the artist, and you find out about when it was made, and how it was made, and the story. Yeah. And you're like, oh, wow! Now I get it. You know. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. It's all about the creative process. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I could drink a lot of this. This is dangerous though, isn't it? It's like it goes down <laughs> very well. What's the idea? Like one before dinner? Is that like is that kind of the idea of it? Like it depends. I'd say aperitivo really depends who you go out with. Uh if it's you know with drink, friends, yeah. yeah, with friends you haven't catch up for a long time, you stay for more than one. And Milan, which is the capital of aperitivo, you know, has now all these concepts, uh, which has like, been very popular for years, where you go out for aperitena, so it's kind of aperitivo and dinner together. So uh -huh. you, will, you will enter in bars, uh, where they would have a buffet, and it's literally all you can eat, and then you just pay the drinks. Something that would never work in UK, probably. <laughs> no, yeah, your culture is so beautiful and lovely, and we're just like pints and fish and chips pies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, have this beautiful drink before you have some food and then go and nibble with your friends. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's great. I love it. I am um, years ago, I went to Venice. It was the first time I'd had a, um, a uh, yeah, like a kind of fancy drink that's not just like a drink to get drunk on kind of thing, you know, and sat around in Venice drinking it. And I got totally hooked on it. Yeah. I love it. The Italian lifestyle, we definitely need to adopt a little bit more of it for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's the dream, isn't it? The European kind of, you know, relaxing late nights on a hot evening, yeah. sitting yeah. in the square, having a few drinks with your friends, kids running around. It's like, yeah, it's fantastic. Surrounded by beautiful architecture. Just, I know. In yeah. Like Pavilion Square or something. Yeah. Wonder, when are we going? <laughs> no. As soon as I can, fight some books. Soon. Can't wait to start traveling again, definitely. Now is a dream, uh, you know. No, I can't even imagine that. From paper and, and art, just to get inspired and keep the dream alive. Yeah. Like, well, that's like, why we did the Cities Reimagined project, yeah. because it was like digital art tourism, you know. Yeah. You can't go to Miami right now, but what does Miami look like through the eyes of an artist? You know, we can't go to Rome. We can't go to Tokyo. You know, no. what Tokyo looked like through the eyes of the artist. So I think, you know, that's kind of, it was really a personal direction as well. I'm so desperate to travel. <laughs> yeah, you want, the, you want the artist like a little taste for yourself to make you feel like you're there, don't you? Yeah. How many cities have you done for this, um, this round of the digital kind of interpretations? Uh, 14 cities. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. And yeah. when are they announced? Uh, the final end is, well, the competition goes until August 5th. And then we will do a round of judging and a an uh, you know public vote, and then we will announce the winners. Uh, what's the date? On the first of September. So first of September is actually a birthday of Italicus. Uh, oh, great! It was uh, was launched, and each year we announce like an arts partnership on the first of September. Since last year, we've been partnering with the All Artists World, thanks to Tina that really embraced this project uh, with Monica and really added a lot of her soul into it. Uh, we really feel like the, this project could initially be come, to, come into life in the same way without her 
just you know kind of positive <laughs> attitude and, and are you blushing are you blushing nice <laughs> you know is um it's all it's all kind of teamwork into these kind of projects you really need everyone input into yeah, what we think would work what what doesn't actually work and what could actually inspire artists to grow themselves as well alongside italicus so we like to say we we do this competition to support emerging artists which is true because italicus is an emerging brand so it makes so much sense for us to work alongside you guys and and just find these collaborations so spontaneous and just coming to life for for the same purpose you know being creative being together benefits everyone it's great yeah yeah i mean yeah. anyone can apply um you can take a city like like you know you don't live in miami but you took miami as your city to focus on because you feel inspired by it and that's exactly yeah. it. it's just like how can we create this kind of connection to another city or to our own city in a different through a different lens you know yeah. and i think that's just, i think also because we all desperately want to travel it's just kind of the idea of like how can we start thinking about that again <laughs> you know yeah. so yeah. i'm excited to see what happens you know obviously yeah. the exhibition was amazing we had some other artists as well get involved with the initial call out did you which mile do you want yeah luke smile That's did cool. a fantasy mural on the tape modern brilliant yeah right yeah it looks really good so it's just nice to see that you can do take it from like any interpretation it could be a fantasy mural it could be a full redesign of an artwork it could be a digital animation i mean it's really kind of how how would you take over the city if you could yeah great yeah. it's fun yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to travel. So you want to travel? <laughs> I want more olives. <laughs> so I think you might need another drink, Alessandro. Tim might need another drink. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm getting there. I just I want, I want more olives as well. Right now. So good. They work so nicely. You see what I mean about that aperitivo, like eat and drink at the same time. Yeah, when well, I saw one of my friends earlier and they were like, oh, you know, saying I was doing this thing and I was like, I've got some olives and stuff. And they were like, olives and a drink? And I was like, yeah, we never had like a martini or anything like that. Normally, drinks martinis in England is kind of some really English thing, to be honest. But yeah, it works so nicely. Love it. It does. Yeah. It's awesome. Love that saltiness. It's kind of, um, you, you eat an olive and you imagine really an, about the Mediterranean Sea, the saltiness when you there, uh, you know, and you eat the seafood. Just so yeah. you transport yourself into. That's oh man, I'm feeling really, really uh, itchy to go away right now. <laughs> <laughs> More than I was before, never bad. <laughs> I know. I think we need to change the conversation away from that. Yeah, should talk about how really great England is. <laughs> well, there's actually like a lot of you know great spots. You were saying before when we were offline, Bristol, uh, where you are, you have some really amazing spots nearby where you can just travel and spend yeah. it in nature. Yeah, like been here for years and had no idea that you know 20 minutes down the road from me would be a spot with like swimming, kind of you know little um, swimming holes and waterfalls and stuff, and surrounded by absolute bliss around here. It's incredible. I think lockdown has been really good for a lot of people because everyone's just been forced to go out and walk and explore, you know? And yeah. um, I've definitely found a new love for the countryside in, in uh, England, for sure, because uh, I've got no other choice but to <laughs> absorb it, you know, which is kind of kind of cool, to be honest. Yeah, it's a yeah. really story, definitely. Yeah, it's really How nice. How has that your, like, inspiration and creativity? It's like... Yeah, I mean... Do you feel any different in terms of your output as an artist due to the past year that we've experienced? Yeah, I mean, I've enjoyed learning more about where I live and seeing surrounding areas. But as far as, like, an inspiration on my on my personal work, I don't know if it probably is a negative not travelling because so much of my inspiration, like colours and shapes and patterns and stuff I see it's from when I travel you know mm -hmm. I go to like Portugal and go and see tiled buildings and that kind of blue that you get over there and stuff that was I started using that in my work and the food I eat the drink I drink and all that kind of stuff the people you meet all of it is a huge inspiration on what I do and I love absorbing other cultures and 
meeting people and seeing different ways of life and stuff and it affects who I am and my work and not having that for like a year and a half has been really tough but then kind of find other ways to get that kick from stuff you know I've been out walking loads and seeing the English countryside but then also since I go home I watch like a big history documentary on like Rome or Egypt and I'm just like watch so many history documentaries now because I just need that kind of history and that culture of other places yeah yeah Yeah. well it's good you've been able to find it elsewhere and like you know stay inspired yeah I mean yeah I have to because you know otherwise I'd just shrivel up yeah so what's next What's up next on the table? Do you have like another project? Do you, are you, do you have travel in the in the calendar? Or like, I mean, yeah, I had I've had a few jobs abroad prop up um, recently, but um, I just don't know when it could happen. So kind of uh-huh. maybe going on the back burner. So I'm quite enjoying just doing loads of projects in England. So yeah, I've got a big solo exhibition up in New Brighton near Liverpool at the start of September. So just making loads of paintings for that, some new sculptures installation bits for that um and then yeah I'll finish off this boat i've been painting paint, finish that tomorrow and then just like yeah loads of projects of doing like murals and you know something on the side of a bar or you know there's loads of stuff like that it's great i'm really busy which is really lovely because this last year has been kind of it's actually been all right for me like work-wise but it's been hit and miss the whole way through like you never know when your next job's going to come in or your next project or anything you know so quite enjoying just being busy and just painting all the time and mm-hmm. you know and now the sun's out yeah i highly recommend taking that bottle of italicus to the boat tomorrow when you finish it but <laughs> well, you might get more it's not even my hand for the next 48 hours yeah, it? Just have that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, might find, you might find more inspiration actually <clears throat> i reckon so yeah, yeah. You try to show the after the create yeah see if you can um I think some people saw the artwork for Miami. See if you can share. See if you can share the files. So just mm-hmm. um, we can show everyone at home uh, what you created for for Italicus inspired by Miami. Sorry, we're still working around this um, stream platform. Um, <laughs> is that is a new so one? As you can imagine, there's been so many different platforms for like video calls and stuff. Can you share yeah, it? I feel like I've used them all now. Yeah. I think you need to open a file. Yeah. And then share it. Yeah. Let's see if we can make this happen. Are you sharing? One second. This is all live, guys. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's it. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Do you want to explain? Do you want to go through into the um, Yeah, sure. Well, you know, obviously, center of the image is the iconic shape of the bottle. I tried to kind of get that color going through it with the transparency and different shades of the green and turquoise. And then you have one of this shape behind it at the top, which is kind of one of my shapes that pop up in a lot of my paintings. And I kind of put some kind of ripples for it to kind of give it that vibe of a pool. Um, and then obviously got the slices of the lemon that are kind of relate to the cocktail drinking things and the shapes and the kind of easy vibe. And then obviously a big old pink flamingo guy sat in the corner. I've never seen you do a pink, pink flamingo before. No, I don't think I've ever done one to be honest. I just <laughs> like with Miami, I had to have one, right? Surely. Yeah, a little bit of palms in it, but instead we got some kind of ferny kind of looking leaves coming from the edge which is kind of a bit of a touch of i guess of like the england crossover to miami kind of thing um yeah it's i kind of i didn't think too much into it i just went with the colors i use that obviously inspired by that kind of old like vice kind of miami kind of thing from the 80s yeah. um yeah and just kind of interweaved it with the bottle and some kind of icons and stuff yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, know, I love it, but it's so like it's it's so easy to recognize that that's Miami, and it just immediately just makes you happier. Like, yes, yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah, is that the, the the flamingo with a cheeky eye? It's got like a cheeky eye. I don't know why, but I think it represents you a little bit. <laughs> well, with my sunburn that I probably got today, I probably prefer looking for the face. Yeah. <laughs> 
Would no. You, yeah. Would you do I like that? that. I like that. I think that's a compliment. That's a good compliment. Being compared <laughs> to Domingo, I think that's a very strong compliment. I'm cool. With that. I mean, you added your personality into it. You really see, you you really see your personality, you know, through this. For us, yeah, it's an amazing. Yeah, it's it's that thing, isn't it? It's that kind of like hecticness with a little bit of order kind of going on you know like kind of they're it's like things are thrown in there but they have their place and they relate to each other but yeah there's a lot going on but it's it's calm but also vibrant and kind of energetic at the same time you know yeah did you come up with this like at first or did you throw in the bean like a few artworks before <laughs> as you said like no it basically started out with like the bottle I did the bottle design first and then I added but the kind of the pool shape kind of jug shape thing behind it um i just kept on adding bits one on, like you know one after another and then a few bits went in that weren't right that i took out and then i added something else and then i just tried to like layer them up with like shadows behind them so they all kind of have a depth you know so they kind of sit like feel like they sit on top or behind things i just kept putting stuff in there until it felt like it felt kind of like a party <laughs> <laughs> That's Miami. There you go. Yeah, exactly. there you go. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, um, Tim, when you when you when you do these digital artworks and then you take it and you do a mural, for example, what's you know kind of the um, the connection you know into getting these and then taking it and painting it onto a, onto a wall? How do you do that? Um, this is someone that's never done it so obviously if yeah I quite, I quite rarely design my murals before i paint them I, like if a wall is really big where i need to get like a a plan or something i will um i'll do like a digital mock-up but the wall it always ends up being so different from my plan i quite i like to just turn up to a wall and just start throwing shapes on it and kind of freestyle it and play it by ear a little bit um <laughs> There's loads of techniques that other people use for translating designs onto big walls. Um, but I kind of tend to go my own route, which is just to jump in with your eyes closed and just hope that it looks really good. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I don't really have like a set formula. Like the way I'm, the boat I'm painting at the moment is obviously like a long wall. I basically started by doing one shape on one end and just working along shape by shape and just bouncing it and kind of playing off the previous shape so that the next one relates and kind of trying to figure it out as I go along, basically. Yeah. Yeah, because obviously on digital, you can you can scrap it off, you know, you can replace shapes and stuff. Control Z, yeah, undo. You, know, you can't undo it on a wall. Well, you can, but it takes yeah. a long time, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. I love it. I mean, I just think it's, I think there's so much more to it you know, there's like the beautiful gradients that are in there, you know, and then, it's really subtle, but it's just, you know, that's what I love about your work, Tim. It's just that it's so clean and it's so considered, even though you, you know, you, you do, you, just, you explain it like it's just so easy. It's just such an extension of you. You're just like, this is how I work. Yeah. But looking at it, I'm like, there's this beautiful gradient even in the background. You know, the the pink goes from the left hand corner down to the right. It does gradient all the way through, and then there's solid color, and then there's other gradients in the circle and the red, and it's just it gives off this kind of sunset feeling without yeah. there being any sunset. Yeah, like the, re the reflection of soft, subtle light, you know, yeah. Yeah, and just the flow of water and in the bottle as well, you can see, you know, the various greens throughout the bottle of transparency. And it's just, it, it, it gives the idea of fluid without actually being fluid, you know. So it's like all these little... You said that, yeah, I mean... <laughs> that just makes the experience of the art for the viewer. They're like, we can feel, you can feel what you're doing there. We can feel the moment. You know, for me, yeah. it was like, oh, yeah, that's my area. That's me sitting on a balcony having a cocktail, you know. Just, In Wynwood, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with, like, my my blow-up pink flamingo around me, my inflatable. Yeah. You know, just looking fabulous. I just I need one of those. Oh, and I think that's what's so beautiful about your work, and that's why you're obviously one of the leading, you know, UK artists that I work with. It's just because it's so... Thank it's, you. It's beautiful what you're doing, and there is a lot of consideration, and there's loads of experience that goes into it. So even though it's just so natural for you to do it, us we're just all sitting here in awe. Like this is amazing. Thank you very much. That's very kind to hear, Dina. 
Yeah, anytime. Anytime. Cheers, guys. Really. Thank you for making this happen as well tonight. No a pleasure. You know, being here together virtually. Hopefully, we can do it again in person um, soon. We have to. Yeah. Yes. Brilliant. Yes. Hopefully, we don't have to be on Zoom calls in weird hallways. <laughs> Next the faith would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. We're coming yeah. to Italy, Marika. We're coming, Alessandro. You guys have to host us, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, that's going to be next step. Last year, we got um, kind of um, stopped to do our event in Italy after the competition because that, um, that, that was the idea, the original idea. Uh, but we'll, we'll have to do something soon. So stay tuned because it's coming. I'm not saying it's coming Rome. I don't think this is kind of um, appropriate. <laughs> I said that. <laughs> that happened already. <laughs> I'm keeping my mouth closed in this corner right here. <laughs> Oh, oh, too soon, too soon. <laughs> but we will go to, to Italy and um, show you guys really well what we're doing wonderfully there as well because um, this is all inspired by by that beautiful country, really. I think everyone has been in Italy at least once have beautiful memories, I hope, <laughs> at least. Yeah. Um, yes, absolutely. About that, that vibe of the food, the drinking, but also the, the, the history in um in the country which has been amazing yeah oh this has been fun thanks for having us Monica. this is great Hi. thank, thank you, you guys for, for joining this and um and also you know kind of explaining a little bit more about you guys because uh is um it's amazing to get to know you better year on year uh so second year we're working together on this and and hopefully more more to come and great projects to to work on together can we sit yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, salute guys. Let's finish with a toast. Well, um, yeah, perfect timing. I just finished mine, so yeah, cool. Oh, you need to fill it up. You can't I will fill it up as soon as it's finished. I'm going to make another one. Oh, cheers. No, guys, cheers, thank guys. you very much. And um, team, good luck with your boat. We want to see the project. Um, thank you. Yeah. If you're ever going to ride your boat down to London, let us know. We can stop and do that. Yeah, with my boat. I'd love it with my boat. boat. Yeah. <laughs> One day. Good luck. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. Yeah.